Yo, so remember how I said my last video? That was probably the last part of this guide. There's actually one thing I forgot to mention, and that is Rosa at the Ledge. Now, Rosa at the Ledge is pretty bad. Like, she's actually atrocious there. A lot of times, you notice, I will just go recover high and try to land with air dodges, B versus, nares, etc. But, there are situations, of course, you have to go to a ledge, and that's just it. So, I'm just going to talk about some of the tricks you can do at the ledge. And strategies that generally help Rose out. So, why is Rose about the ledge, first of all? She's so floaty that her ledge jump, even with her airspeed being decent, her when she jumps, she's in there for a long period of time. So people have chances to just swing like two or three times there before she can land, especially swords. Now, she does have a really good range of movement where she can like reach out just a ledge jump into landing and like double jump even gets her farther to the other ledge actually than FD. So she has a good range of movement and generally speaking, a ledge jump is your best option with her and just reading the timing on when you should do it. Because you can always of course mix up your drift, your back airs, your nares, your air dodges, whatever. So generally ledge jumps go with her. Now, since she's so tall, her ledge get particularly is garbage, where a lot of rising aerials just hit her for free. Like, she actually is very easy to hit doing ledge get up because she's so tall. To the point where even get up attack, a lot of times is more preferable than get up. Because when she doesn't get up attack, she's invincible, of course, until the attack comes out. And until the way into the move, she's pretty low to the ground, right? It's like she's only standing up the other way into the move, and that's not a big one to hit her with like a rising aerial if they're just mashing it. But that's still not great because it's punishable. And then her ledge roll is pretty bad. If you look at the animation of her ledge roll. I just want to turn this video on, so watch. Look when she's vulnerable and look at her animation while she's vulnerable. So invulnerable and vulnerable. She's on her back right here. So she's actually not far past the ledge when she ledge rolls. Because she's just on her back doing whatever the heck she's doing. Before being able to show him, look at that, look at that. Look at how, look how long that is to hit her, and how easy it is. You can hit her with so much stuff accidentally. I've got hit with people trying to do forward smash to catch regular getup while rolling. Because they'll space at the ledge, and it just hits slightly like on the a character's body, like a, a Palutena, for example, and they'll just accidentally hit my head, and that's it. That's my stock. So, that's why all of our ledge options, besides jump, pretty much are garbage. So, what are some tricks you can do? to make the situation a bit better, besides not going to the ledge in the first place. Now, you have Luma around, another issue is, during all your ledge options, Luma is vulnerable, right? She's vulnerable to home ledge, so you can like downer her here. But if you do that, Rose doesn't get to stage generally pretty easily. Like if you downer Luma, say, I don't know, Mega Man downer, right? Cool, you kill Luma with that, but then Rose gets the ledge roll for free and gets escape. And if I ledge up, for example, look at Luma's position. If I get up, look at Luma's position. If I get up attack, Luma's still vulnerable, right? So even if they get hit by get up attack, they hit Luma a lot of times. And if I roll, Luma is just easy target. So everything you do at the ledge with Rosa keeps Luma vulnerable. So what should you do to compensate? A lot of times you want to use Luma as both a guard and a bait when at the ledge. So like one thing that's very important to ledge with Rosa is before you get to the ledge, what are you doing with Luma? Let's say you're right here. Your opponent's going to ledge trap you. They're not going to edge guard you. They've committed to a position that says, all right, I'm, I get to ledge now. So one nice trick to do is Luma shot like this. I did too early actually. Let's try again. So go here and you want to be like, oh, I can't mess up again. I'm going to try. You want to do this, right? You do jump on Sage, Luma shot. You do it around here. So that we have an option. If you hit him, you can just shift on Sage. But if you don't hit him, let's assume you're not going to hit him. Oh, I messed up spacing actually on stage. That's actually not that good because then they can generally hit Luma and hit Rosa pretty easily. It's like right here, you do this. And I don't hit him. Sure, whatever. Oh, I have a space again. Oh, I guess I should probably practice this, huh? There we go, something to work on. I'm trying to work on this. Rosa's garbage. It's like right here, you hit him, that's awesome. But assuming you don't hit him. Now you're in a spot where you can do a few things. You can attack, as you see. So if they press a button after Luma's doing this, I can like hit him with a Nair. I can Star Bits. Oh, I put my double jump, that's what's happening, okay. Actually, I'm just not gonna... Nah, I keep this on. I wanna showcase the things you can do. It's like here, I shot him, right? Now, I can either grab ledge, or if I want to, I can do an attack, right? So 
so I can do a Luma Starbits or a Luma Up Air or Fair. If I Starbits, that's not really going to do much in terms of pushing him away. It should be a little bit of a poke, but it's more than nothing to poke him back. And now if they get hit by Starbits here, they're too far away to really set something off a ledge, right? Because not only is Luma there kind of patrolling ledge, so they hit Luma I get onto the stage for free. I get to do regular getup, probably. But if they like go towards me, I always have a few mix-ups now if they run towards me. They can... I can do this. I can do ledge drop and back air them. I can do ledge drop, fair them. I can jump over them and back air them. I can jump over them and do nothing. I have Luma guarding me. So when I jump past Luma, look how far I am from Luma. Even before my dash. I'm so far away. And I can starb it afterwards and I can reversal them essentially and take stage control because Luma's there. And... Yeah, Luma's just in a spot where if they try to aggressively hit the ledge, where you're like, doing this. And Kimo, when you shoot Luma out, Luma's always going to try to move to a certain distance. So pretty much always Luma's going to be around here when you're at the ledge. After you do a Luma shot all that ledge grab time. So, you have all these mix-ups if they go after you. And if they respect Luma try to Luma, like I said, you get to generally do regular get-up. Or if they like, hit Luma while you're here, and hold on ledge, but like they're like, right next to the ledge. You can probably roll or even jump. So shooting Luma onto the stage is, as you can see, vital for Rosa's mix-ups at the ledge. And while a lot of times you're gonna lose Luma doing it, doing this, it's better to lose Luma, get on stage, and just wait ten seconds. Keep my only ten seconds. If you get on stage with a jump, like let's say Luma dies right now, and I jump, that's probably like two seconds burned right there. One, two, three. I do that back here. Pretend it's a safe back here, they blocked it or whatever, or they just didn't punish it. Three seconds gone of Luma's respawn timer while I'm doing this ledge jump back here. I just got dash around a few more times, maybe get a dash check, maybe even just back here again once or twice more, and Luma's back now. So that's so important. Sometimes when you know Luma's gonna respawn and you're off stage, it's actually worth stalling off stage even extra long until Luma comes back and saving a double jump and then doing like a Luma shot, right? Like, blah, blah, blah. Luma's come back soon. Or doing this as well. In that case, get up, immediate jump off stage. And I want to mention I did get up into jump off stage because a lot of times people are looking to, like, if you do a get up into something, they might just wait for you to roll or jump or shield. So I feel like sometimes you can just get away with get up without Luma into jump off stage and kind of slot the timer. And so, like, oh, get up, jump off stage. Oh, Luma's back now. And then Luma shot on stage and do all your mix ups, right? Another slow you can do off stage is down B. So if you down B once in the air, it actually cancels your fall speed pretty much. Like if I am doing fast fall and I suddenly down B. Actually, I should put this in regular speed so you guys can see. I do down B. Look how like she falls at regular speed, right? So that's a really good mix up as well is to use the down B. Because you can also B reverse this, I believe. Yeah, you can B reverse this. So you can be off stage and go, alright, I'm off stage. B reverse, down B, kind of saw myself out a bit, turn around, get away from the opponent, up B. And that's nice. And also, something else you can do when trying to get on stage. If you want to be a lot more aggressive, but you don't want to use a forward air, you can do this. You can use your down B or your neutral B to turn around in the air and go for a back air, right? And I do this a lot with Luma around, honestly, where if Luma's not around, I'd rather use forward air generally for hitting keep on stage. No matter what you're doing, if you're going for an aggressive option like this, you're committing, right? But if I go for that forward air, it's like... It's not as good as back air, just quite frankly. It's not as much range. I believe there's more landing lag. And it's less damage. So when you have Luma around, doing this is a good strategy. B reverse. Down B, turn around, and then like jump on stage bear. And use all that range from Rosa Luma to just annoy the opponent because a lot of people aren't ready for that. And you can still drift, you can like this, and drift backwards, and then still grab the ledge. As the people have to counter this by either jumping over the bear, blocking it, and chasing off stage, or forward smashing you. So you can often get away with this once, or maybe even twice, before your opponent catches on, and then if they're catching on and just shielding at the ledge, you can grab ledge for free, right? There's no more mix-up of they're going to edge guard you, because now they're going, oh shoot, he's back me, I gotta shield this. You can always, of course, up air as well to the same effect, like... Someone's with ledge shielding or trying to go off stage, you up air them a few times, they'll start shielding the ledge. And once they start doing that, 
Not only do you grab ledge while they're stuck in shield, they're not gonna chase off Sage because they're expecting the attack. And as long as you don't attack their shield, you're fine. Now, if they shield when you do this, well, I don't have to tell you. They can run off Sage and hit you and try to Sage spike you. It's actually hard to just down your Rosa though, because her drift and her fall speed be just enough that she can do like that, right? Like, oh, you blocked up there? Fast fall. And then up again anyway. So that's not an easy punch to get, but a lot of people will just like try and Sage spike you. Um, some people will try and like, you know, just spike you regularly, they're really good. Or they have like a, say, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something to use, like a lingering hitbox. Let's say they're like Pikachu, for example. They can just run off stage and nair. And even if they don't spike you, that lingering nair hitbox will hit you easily during up B and you can't do much about it. Because if you do that up air, and you don't have a double jump left, you force up B directly upwards. And that's it. But yeah, so that's your mix ups at the ledge. I'm trying to think of other things she has at the ledge. She can also do this at the ledge. If she has no more around, one of the more interesting mix-ups is jump star bits. If this is blocked, you're getting punished, for sure. But the range of this is so big, and you can always do it there afterwards, so if they're not ready to punish, that happens. If you hit them with this move, the nair follow-up generally means they can't really do anything except block. I mean, you get Luma to come back to you at the ledge. You get pressure, you get back to mid-stage, it's just great overall. You can also do fair if they're close to a ledge or you think they might jump to hit you, and you can hit them first. You can also do Nair, which actually, if you Nair someone like here and they get caught by it, you can sometimes combo to an up air and turn this ledge state into your advantage pretty hard. You can always do, of course, ledge drop Nair. I do this a lot, actually. Ledge drop Nair to try and do that and cross them up, or ledge drop fair, kind of cross them up. Maybe even poke their shield if their shield's not full, hit like a corner of their shield. I keep mentioning my guides, using fair to poke the corner of someone's shield is so good. So, take note of that. You can do this, do ledge drop luma shot and then like nair afterwards for like extra pressure and there's a lot of things you can do and one thing you notice is rosa has a lot of ways at the ledge to kind of reverse those situations so like while our options are all risky you have so many mix-ups with where you space the attack what attack you use what timing are you doing it off the ledge as a jump as a ledge drop are you shooting luma first second are you doing nothing like you can make your opponent shield so often at the ledge and mix them up at the ledge by just making them shield and then, or making them not shield. Because if they expect you to attack, they should shield punish. Or outspace the attack, which requires them to know where you're going to attack in the first place. And then, at that point, if they're shielding or doing that stuff, you can just jump past them because they're shielding. Or you can just get up because they're like trying to space an attack to cover your attack and probably backing off a bit for that. So yeah, that's, that's a good amount of Rosa's edge mix-ups that I tend to use. You kind of have to use everything and be very creative with her. And that's it. And if you don't have Luma, of course, and at the ledge, then, like, good luck. Like, you still have some mix-ups with offensive options, but... Honestly, as I was making this guide, right now I realized something. When you have Luma at the ledge, Rose is okay. It sinks that you lose Luma a lot of times, but, like, Rose is decent here with Luma. But it's just once you lose Luma here, it's... Oof. It hurts badly. Okay, this probably is for real the end of my Rosa guide, so it's five parts. It's a good amount. These are probably pretty informative. If you guys watch all of them, then they're definitely helpful, so that's pretty cool.